everybody. I'm Sandy, Lin Sandy Linnae. I can't even say my name right. I'm Sandy Linnae, and welcome to Psychic Creations. In advance, thank you for watching. We have an exciting show for you today, if I can speak properly. I've got my cheat sheets to help here with me. As I have mentioned before in previous shows, I am a psychic reader and a psychic in a paranormal investigative team based in Carson City called Thin Veil Investigators. And we have investigated many, many places here in the Northern Nevada region, um, places like documented haunted houses and museums, businesses, private homes, churches, stores, and even caves. That's pretty cool. And we've also investigated items like haunted teapots, paintings, dolls, and clocks. It is amazing to discover just what spirits are hanging out at, near, or on, let's say, private jewelry pieces, furniture, meadows, or fields, and yes, in cemeteries and graveyards too. There is one task that we veilers perform before every investigation, and it's something that we feel is of utmost importance, and that is research. I can't stress enough to you that when you go out, before you go out on an investigation, be sure that you try and get as much information as you can, because one reason for is very important in learning the history that surrounds that building or item because learning the history makes an investigation much more interesting. It really does. And learning the history in regards to spirits and ghosts can clarify an anomaly that you might capture on film or video or with EVP, which is electronic voice phenomenon, ghost speak on your digital or tape recorders. Let's say you go into a particular building and you catch on film a misty figure of a woman wearing a long green dress. Well, you might know who this is because you took the time out to do your research and you discovered that the original buildings, uh, the owner of the original building, what am I trying to say, the, the original owner of the building wore long green dresses and she died in 1960. It's really actually very exciting to do your research and get an idea of who just might be in that particular building or in the area. And then that brings forth the excitement on hoping that you capture that spirit on film or on video. So research. If it's not possible to do research before an investigation, please do it while you're there and especially after. Research, as I've said, is very important because the go it makes your ghost hunts noteworthy and that's very important. Now, setting research aside for just a moment, we veilers have had many questions posed to us about alternative approaches to investigations. For an example, one question is, what can we do if there is no known documented ghost building, haunted building in our area? And another question is, that building is privately owned or the parks department close up and locks up the lands at night? How do we gain access? And then another question is, we are just starting an investigative team. Where should we ghost hunt first? Well, we Finn Veilers always have the correct answers for that. Now, one of the answers that we give is one, go to a museum. Pay that extra, a few dollars to go into any museum, that privately owned castle or the state monument. I mean, museums are, are great historic, well, monuments to everybody. Number two, take a tour. Tours are fabulous. You can take an inside or an outside tour, which gives you much information and much history for your research about the building, about the area, or the complete town. 
all kinds of information when you go on a tour. Make sure that you wear comfy shoes for your walkabout and get a token to ride that tour trolley. Both of those are great ways to go on an investigation around the grounds, get the history, see what's around the area. And what's even fun on this type of, of investigation is it's all secret. You can do anything you want, take the amount of pictures that you want, a video, and it's a secret to ghost hunt and nobody knows what you're doing, but you are. <laughs> and in the process, you get all kinds of history for your research. It's a lot of fun. Now to continue, number three, graveyards. Cemeteries are a history lesson in themselves. What with the tombstone inscriptions, the burial, the different burial sections, and also the tombstone sculptures. That in itself can give you much history for, again, lots of nice research that you should be doing. <laughs> and like I said a minute ago, do your research while you are on a tour in the museum. Okay, now, if you want a smaller scale investigation, go to antique stores, thrift stores, any place that carries or uh, houses or sales personal properties that are no longer wanted or needed by the owners. Lots of history, lots of hauntings in antique stores and thrift stores, believe me. And those are just a few ideas of the alternative places to be investigating. We Veilers have been to everything that I have mentioned. And we have an awful lot of fun because we're learning the history that surrounds a particular building, a place or item. And also we're gathering our own information on film, on video, on EVP. All these alternative ways are a lot of fun. If you can't gather together a team and go on a ghost hunt, a paranormal investigation, then make your own. It's, it's very easy. All right. We will be right back after this short break with an exciting guest speaker who will give us further information about the psychic creations topic. Hi, and welcome back to Psychic Creations. We have been speaking about alternative paranormal investigative ways. One is to take a tour. My guest speaker today happens to be the founder and guide of a very, very impressive tour in our region. Please welcome Kim Coppell. Yay! Hi! Hey, thank you, Sandy, well, for having me on your show. Well, thank you for being here. I want everybody to know all about your your tours. <laughs> so can you give everybody all the contact information and the yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, it, the name of the tours is, is called Genoa Historic Ghost Tours, and it is in the town of Genoa, Nevada. Uh, we have a location that's between the oldest thirst parlor in Nevada, which is the old Genoa Bar, and uh, Genoa Antiques. It's called the Cobweb Palace Antique Store. And uh, at this yeah, at this time, we probably prefer it's best that you call to, to make, it's suggested that you call to make reservations, although it's not absolutely necessary, but you would call 775-220-0605. You can find more information about our tours on our website, which is GenoaHistoricGhostTours.com. We have a Facebook page uh, by the same name, and you can also contact me by email at info at GenoaHistoricGhostTours.com. That's two T's, don't forget that. All right, <laughs> we are just all over the place. That's it, awesome, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I've been on her tour. Oh, you can get all kinds of information, history. Yes. She's even done the research for you. <laughs> I have, that's the only way to go about it, I that's think. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kim, if you don't mind now, I'd like to ask you some questions for our viewers here. Sure. How did you become interested in building a tour business? Well, that is probably a story that uh, is akin to what many people are going through these days. Um, I was looking for a new career path and I was kind of 
tired of what I'd been doing for the last 25 years, which was, you know, in administrative management. And, and I have a passion for history and sharing history. So I was looking for something that I could do that I enjoyed, but make money at it. Uh, it was suggested to me that I, you know, give a walking tour of a town that I was familiar with. I did some research and found through the research that straight history tours were mostly given by historical societies or mm -hmm. on a volunteer basis. Um, people probably in general didn't expect to pay more than a couple dollars here and there to take the tour, if anything at all. So I thought, well, that's fine, but it wasn't going to be a money maker. Um, I had a very good friend named Sandy Lene, oh, and my significant other, um, Doyle Harris, uh, both uh, realized um, before I did, even though for a couple years I'd been involved in the Carson City annual ghost walk in October, I'd been a docent for them. Uh, both you and Doyle said, well, Kim, what is the what is the latest craze right now? And it's ghost tours. And Doyle pointed out that I have information on the town of Genoa and actual ghost sightings through your publications. And so that gave me a start. So I figured I could probably put together, through my experience and research, probably a pretty good ghost walk of Genoa. Yes, and you have. <laughs> it's you funny. have. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I really like what you're doing. I it, love it. I love your enthusiasm and your, your passion for your tours. It just comes out when you speak. That's awesome. Well, okay, now I'm going to ask you, here's a question about research. How many hours of research do you have under your belt for your tour? Well, that's a tough one because in the terms of hours, I, I couldn't begin to tally up the hours because I don't sit there and tally them up. Um, but I can say in terms of research, I probably specifically for the town of Genoa with, with a purposeful research, probably three to four years. Oh, goodness. Three to four years and literally giving uh, at some point, sometime each day, five to six days a week. And that is because that's, I love researching. I'll pick up a news article, I'll be on the web, I'll be reading a book. Um, that will spark an interest in looking into this or that, or somebody I'll be talking to might give me a piece of information that I would want to research further because I think that it might be interesting on the tour. So to some degree, I think I do research at least six days a week, mm -hmm. um, but it's fun, so I don't really think of it as research so much, but I make sure I take good notes so that I can go back to it later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's just awesome. I love that. Well, now, your research in Genoa there, did the people of Genoa help you? in your research at all or? You know, I was overwhelmed by the response that I got in Genoa because um, I don't know where I got the harebrained idea to even do this in a town that I'd only lived in for six months. Oh. So I was new to the oldest town in Nevada. Um, nobody knew me and I wanted to give a history tour as if I knew everything there was to know about Genoa. <laughs> so um, I, I think it was my positive attitude and perhaps not even thinking I could fail, you know, mm -hmm. which was just helpful. Sure. But several fourth and fifth generation families came forward and oh. sat down with me oh. just to make sure I got the right information. Uh -huh. And they did it in a very friendly way, sure. not a defensive way. Uh, we had citizens that had lived in the town for, for, you know, 45 years or more that sat down with me to help me understand the, the uh, evolution of the town. Um, oh, nice. People who, who had businesses in the town mm -hmm. uh, were very welcoming because they knew that it would help their businesses too. One citizen of the town who um, was, was a historian herself, is a historian and a keeper of the history of the town, even lent me her family's copy of Thompson and West's History of Nevada, 1881. And she'd oh. only known me uh, probably a couple weeks and she called me up and she said this is something that is invaluable to your research and I want to lend it to you. So oh, what a again find. I was overwhelmed by by the response for somebody like me to come into town and, and want to share their history. It, it was you know maybe just the the universe was sure was Helping speaking to all of us mm -hmm. and, and helped us all figure out how to do it in the right way. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, passing the torch. Yeah, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, you know, but, oh. but that, and that is why I want to make sure that my history is accurate because I'm honoring these people who this is their town mm -hmm. even more so than mine. Mm -hmm. I'm new to the town. I, I don't want to mess up. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to knowingly give the wrong history. And if I, if I give something that somebody later corrects me on, I'm happy to correct sure. it. Well, because sure. we can't know everything all the time. So I always welcome new information or if, if unknowingly I've been saying something inaccurately to mm -hmm. some degree, I welcome the correction because I want people to walk away knowing the truth mm -hmm. in, in everything I say. Well, History is always being updated daily. It is. So. History mm -hmm. is evolving. Uh -huh. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, praise the people of Genoa that, that are helping you out. That's yeah. wonderful. Okay, now I have always been very curious about this this question I'm going to ask you. Can you tell us, uh, our viewers, about the concept of a historic ghost tour? Oh well, I'm glad you asked that, Sandy, because I, it was a purposeful naming of Genoa Historic Ghost Tours, mm -hmm. and this is my belief, and it's always been my belief since I was a little girl, that. Um, History is very important. When you give a tour of a town, if it's worthwhile to give a historic tour, then it needs to be about the history of the town. When you add the word ghosts or historic ghosts as part of the phrase, I believe the ghosts are part of the history. They Ooh. are. They, 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 were, they were there in the town. They were the founders of the town in many cases or people who lived there and made a difference. Uh, because they're living on another plane now doesn't make any difference. They're still part of the town. I also purposely made sure my motto was Genoa, where the ghosts help to tell the history, because I look to them to help me. You know, sure. I look, I look to what they experience to help me put pieces together that I can only get through reading books, news articles, or talking to the living of the town. Mm -hmm. And I'm very pleased to say that in several cases, through finding out some history um, of some, some uh, Genoans or some local characters that have passed, and through help like your psychic abilities when you've walked around town with us, we have been able to put certain pieces together mm -hmm that have made the tour much more interesting and given people uh, ideas of what they can go research. And I'm not going to tell you the certain stories. You're going to have to come on the tour. <laughs> but we had two stories in particular that it took one whole year uh, through different interactions with people on the tour, yourself, research, that after a year it brought our complete story together, which is even more exciting than what we originally started to talk about. Oh, so, yeah. Well, that's awesome, Kim. Yeah. Oh, so how that's wonderful. to me, ghosts are the history, and they, I look to them to help me tell mm -hmm. their history correctly. And so far, they have been very willing to help us because I think, like anybody, even the living, through my experience, as I just you know, explained, they want the history told accurately. Mm -hmm. And well, I want to do. oblige. They yeah. do. Oh, <laughs> You're just awesome. I'm so glad you're on the show. Well, thank you for your help. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, now tell me, this, do the Genoans like your tours? <laughs> and, you know, thank you for asking. I, th I'm, I think they do, and mm -hmm. the reason I think they do is, believe it or not, I've had several of the residents of Genoa come on my tours, um, oh, not, not through begging them, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but at different times um, schedule a group tour, maybe a ladies' night out, mm -hmm. or um, come on Sweet Sipping Sunday tours. Oh, mm -hmm. And several of these, these Genoans, uh, in, in, in a couple cases, their own parents or grandparents were the historians of the town. Oh. And they wanted to see, I don't think if, if I knew my history, but they were curious um, because maybe when they were little girls, they didn't listen as closely as, as adults now that they wanted to. And I've had them tell me, oh, I, I learned a few things that I didn't know. And here they had grown up all their oh. lives and they were third or fourth generation. Mm -hmm. So I think they enjoy the tours, and when they're on my tours, you know, they remind me that there's a reason why my research has to be thorough. Mm -hmm. I think the businesses, I've had a lot of feedback that they are happy that um, I'm doing the tours mm -hmm. because 
I walk people around the town. I mean, folks, for those of you who haven't been to Genoa lately or at all, Genoa is only about three blocks long, you know, the main street of it. So in a two-hour tour, I can walk people around just to about every business park. Yes, you can. And so when they're done, mm -hmm. they decide, well, you know, I try to make them tired, and I try to end just about lunchtime. <laughs> so that they can go have you know lunch, they can go shopping, they can mm -hmm. drink at the oldest thirst parlor, or they can go to the two parks or the two museums. Mm -hmm. So I think that the uh, business people of Genoa um, see the benefit of having sure. a walking tour. Oh, yeah. and, and many of the businesses are in historic buildings, so the people can't wait to get inside to mm -hmm. see what's going on. Oh, of course. Yes. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Well, yay those Genoans. <laughs> yeah, all the way around. I, I'm just very lucky to be a part of their town. Well, they're happy to have you too. I know that for a fact. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> now, do some businesses in Genoa and homeowners, do they allow your tour guests to come in, um, maybe privately or as part of your tour? Yes, in some cases they do, which does enhance the tour. Mm -hmm. So I think that this, this even sets our tour apart from tours in several other towns. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, for instance, uh, the Dake House, the historic Dake House, oh, which is the mm -hmm. business Antiques Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yes, it's a, a shop, but uh, the owner, Martha Williams, always welcomes the tours to come in and for people to, to walk through the home, go downstairs and upstairs, knowing that they're probably not shopping right then and there, but they'll probably come back mm -hmm. and shop. But it's sharing the history and the, the spiritual history of the mm -hmm. home as well. Uh, we have, um, oh, the Pink House, for instance. Oh, mm -hmm. um, at one mm -hmm. point, my tours were operating out of the historic Pink House, and, and I'm no longer doing that. But uh, the Pink House, whenever the owner, Dave Groendyke, is at the home and he's working in the garden or, or doing something there. Um, he has always invited our tours to come through. He'll open up the door and say, why don't you take nice. them through so they can show it. Now mm -hmm. upstairs is a private residence. He has um, he has tenants upstairs, mm -hmm. but downstairs is still um, uh, uh, not residential but business property. Mm -hmm. And it's really a nice treat for people to go inside and see a little bit more about what I was talking about because it's a very significant home in the history from the beginning of Genoa up through yes, today. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, we have, uh, for instance, uh, Genoa Station and No No Sweet Repeats is in a, a building that is somewhat historic and mm -hmm. it has hauntings and, and both proprietors are welcome our tours to come in. I think for the same reason, because they're hopeful that the people will come back and enjoy the establishment. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the old Genoa bar is, is always <laughs> is always there to go in. <laughs> it's a nice place to go yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. So again, uh, many of the business owners, mm -hmm. even while I have a tour of people, have been very, very uh, welcoming. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to forget also the White House Bed and Breakfast, which was the historic Siljukster home, which we have access to walk around the grounds during our tours. Oh, that's very As long nice. as they're not having an event like a wedding or something mm -hmm. like that. But because there's lots of happenings there and being able to walk around the building and show the different sides and points of the building mm -hmm. uh, is, is enhances the tours. Sure it would. Yeah, so uh, very gracious have the businesses and uh, private residences been. Very that's gracious. Great. Yeah, that is very nice. Very nice. I'm sure there's probably not too many places uh, well, around the world, or especially in no. America, you're not allowed to go into places that you're touring and, and getting history about. Yeah, well, That's we would, wouldn't want to, you know, uh, interrupt business and, mm -hmm. and private homes. Sure. We, we re, you know, we, we respect their privacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, we have a few minutes left. Um, you can give us some more information, if you don't mind, about your tours. What uh, different types of tours do you have? Oh, yeah. Well, we have several different types of tours because, Sandy, you were with me on my very first walkthrough, mm -hmm. and uh, we had enough information for six hours of tours. And I, while I, I like to think I give a good tour, I know nobody wants to listen to me for six hours straight. <laughs> so I've broken our tours up into about three or four different two-hour tours. So we have a choice depending upon where you want to go in town and what you want to learn. If there's a group of people who aren't even really interested in the ghost, that's okay because there is enough straight history that mm -hmm. it's still an exciting tour. Uh, we mm -hmm. can give a tour of the cemetery that can last an hour to 90 minutes, the Genoa Cemetery where many of the founding uh, mm -hmm. fathers yes. and, and families are buried. Uh, we have holiday tours around mm -hmm. um, 
uh, Halloween. Mm -hmm. We have our interactive uh, uh, Genoa Cemetery tour, mm -hmm. which in part benefits the uh, the upkeep of the Genoa Cemetery. Oh, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And we get the Thin Veil investigators involved in Yay. that. <laughs> and uh, we can actually tailor a special tour to any group of people. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do a night tour by special request as well. Mm -hmm. So so we're there to, to make your tour an exciting tour. Oh, that's wonderful, Kim. Yeah. Oh, that's great that you offer the, the di many different tours. Well, for that that's little great. town, there's a lot we can do with it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's true. And and you were mentioning, too, how long your tours last. Um, oh, the average tour lasts two hours. Tours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. but and the cemetery tour is a little shorter. But, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, we're doing a children's ghost tour uh, this month, and, it, you know, an hour is enough. They, mm -hmm. they requested just an hour. So perhaps on that one we won't mention the hangings. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> Well, that might be a good idea. All right, just really quick, what inspired you to create your tour business in Genoa versus like Minden or Carson? Oh, well, now that's a good question. I think it is the uh, history of Genoa itself being the oldest um, and first settlement in Nevada, mm -hmm. and it's tied to Tahoe and Virginia City and its history, as well as it's tied to the na national history believe it or not. I see. Mm -hmm. And I want, living in Genoa, I want to show Genoa off. And, and I think, you know, not to take away from Gardnerville or Minden, which, you know, they're mm -hmm. historic in their mm -hmm. own rights, but there's a certain uniqueness to Genoa yes, that inspires me and, and, and hooked me. And that's why I chose Genoa. Well, I think you had a good choice. I think I did too. <laughs> All right, for our viewers, can you give contact information, how to get a hold of you? Yes, you please. Um, again, um, because you know, certain holidays and town events come up that I don't want to step on their toes and do a tour, it is a small town uh, geographically, uh, please give me a call at 775-220-0605 or you can email me at info at GenoaHistoricGhostTours.com. You can find us on Facebook and you can check out the webpage too. You're just all over the place. And I we like are. that. We're trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kim, so much for being our guest speaker today. Everybody's got to take her tour. It's it's awesome. It's fabulous. It's just the greatest tour I've ever been on. <laughs> well, and thank you for, for having me on the show and for all of the contributions oh. you and Thin Veil <laughs> investigators have made to the tour, mm -hmm. really. It wouldn't be the tour that it is. And I want to add really quickly before we run out of time, it, because of Sandy and people's personal experiences, we don't make up ghosts on our tours. We don't have oh. to. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of uh, spirits in Genoa uh, ready to share, to share your, your ghost tour with them. Well, thank you for that. That is a very good point. Thank you for being on our show. And if you would like to go on, uh, see some of the places that uh, Thin Veil Investigators has investigated, please look to my website, our website, at www.sandypsychicstones.com slash tvi.html. And now if I can boast myself, I am a psychic reader, and for those of you that are interested in a psychic reading or a spirit reading that I can communicate with those that have crossed over, please, there again, get a hold of my uh, website, which is www.sandypsychicstones.com. And Kim, thank you very much for being on the show today. My pleasure. And thank, thank you, you, viewers, for watching the show. Thank you for watching Psychic Creations. And we'll see you next show.